If you're doing astrophotography with a monochrome camera, then one of the most important investments you can make is a good set of filters. And in today's video, I want to take a look at the Astronomic Deep Sky RGB filter set along with their narrowband HSO filters. And we're going to see how these perform mainly against my older ZWO filters. First, we're going to head over to Astronomic's website and see how much these filters cost, what options are available, as well as some of the unique design changes with the 36 millimeter unmounted filters. The first thing I want to mention is that this is Astronomic's new website, so the layout is a lot different than what you might be used to. I myself have been having trouble finding some of the filters. But in this case, we're going to start off with their photographic color filters. We're looking for the deep sky RGB. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we can actually find the filters that we're looking for finally. This brings us to the product page. And like any other filter, you've got a couple different choices. You can go with one and a quarter inch. That's going to be the smallest and cheapest option, which I don't really recommend. Then we have two inch, which are much larger and more expensive. Generally, two inch is going to be your safest bet because these have a little thread on the back. And that means you can either install them in a filter wheel, a telescope, or a filter drawer, whatever you want to do. And then the other popular choice is the 36 millimeter unmounted. But this is where Astronomic really sets itself apart they've included a metal protective ring around the filter because normally if you buy a 36 millimeter mounted filter it's just a piece of glass and that makes everything more difficult and while the metal ring might sound like a minor improvement it actually makes a world of difference because now you have the filter name printed actually on the filter itself whereas with virtually any other 36 millimeter unmounted filter it's just a piece of glass you really have no way of knowing which one is which if they're all out of the packaging also, with that metal ring, when you're grabbing a hold of it, it makes it much easier. You don't have to worry about getting your fingerprints all over the glass as much. And you can just drop it right into the slot and you're good to go. Of course, if you're shooting with one and a quarter inch or the two inch filters, then none of this really applies to you. But for those that do have the 36 millimeter filters, this will be a big improvement. As for me personally, I went with the RGB filter set, 36 millimeter unmounted with the protective ring because my filter wheel was set up for that. But in your case, maybe we'll go with a two inch. That's up to you. These are quite a bit more expensive though. And you'll want to keep in mind, this is a German website. This price is in euros and it will ship from Germany. However, I got my package within a week with no issues. If you just want to buy from a retailer in the US though, I understand. Agena Astro does have some of their filters available. Most notably the Astronomic Deep Sky RGB. 36 millimeter unmounted for just under $400. They also have the L2, but this is two inch, so that wouldn't really work for me, and it's out of stock. They've also got plenty of others. If you wanna check that out, I will have a link down below. All right, so once you've decided on the filter size you wanna go with, the next step is to get a luminance filter because this is only RGB. And with the new website, they've kind of hidden this. It's hard to find. Let me see if I can track it down. All right, so I looked up Astronomic L2. This is a filter that I purchased. And the way this works is that they have three different luminance filters, L1, L2, L3. L1 gives you the most amount of light. L2 is a bit more narrow, and then L3 is the narrowest of the bunch. And if we take a look down below, L1 is for optical systems free of chromatic aberration. L2 is suitable for most optical systems with a corrector or a flattener. And L3 is designed for probably telescopes that aren't the best. I personally went with the L2. That seemed like the most logical choice, and I haven't had any issues so far. Although I guess if you have a really nice telescope, then you might want to try the L1. And if we scroll back up, you will see the option for L1, L2, and L3. The price will change depending on which one you go with. Again, I went with the L2 36mm with protective ring for about $100 roughly. That's in addition to the Deep Sky RGB set, which was, again, just under $400. So all told, you're looking at roughly 500 bucks just for RGB imaging. And if you want to do narrowband, which you probably do, that's going to be an additional expense. We'll find that under narrowband filters, HSO. And we'll scroll all the way to the bottom again. We have 36 mm with protective ring. That's what I'm going to go with. And we also have the choice of doing either six nanometers or 12 nanometers. I would highly recommend everybody go with six nanometers. That's going to give you much better performance. This would be a good time to mention that while six nanometers is good, 
you could do better. If we go back to Agena Astro, let's look up Antlia. That's usually a reputable manufacturer as I understand it. I've never personally used their filters though. And we take a look, they have the three nanometer version, 36 millimeter unmounted. Like we talked about before, these are just a piece of glass, which I don't like. That makes the installation process very difficult. As for the price, you're looking at about $1,000, but these are three nanometers, which means you're cutting out more of that unwanted background stray light, if you will, and you're just harnessing the wavelengths from the nebulae. And if we compare the Antlia three nanometer filters, 36 millimeter, again, you're about $1,000, against the astronomic six nanometer, you're at about 650. Is it worth spending $400 roughly for the three nanometers? That's something you need to decide on your own. For more information, you might want to read through Astronomics write up to understand the difference between the 12 and 6. But again, for most people, I think the 6 nanometer is your best bet. Next, let's see how these Astronomic filters perform in terms of flares, because this has been the one frustrating aspect I've been dealing with for the last five years with the ZWO filters. Whenever I had any sort of bright star in the frame, it would have a massive flare. And while some of these are easy enough to fix in Photoshop, many others are nearly impossible. And the astronomic filters are said to have a dual coating on both sides, so this should theoretically result in much better performance. The first image we have is of the Horsehead Nebula. This is a notorious region for bright stars. And to be clear, this image was captured with my ZWO filters back in 2020. I just wanna show you how bad things can be, because if we zoom into the Flame Nebula, you'll see our first flare of the day. And it's actually multiple flares combined into one. We have kind of like a square flare around the outside. Then we have a more circular flare in the middle. And surrounding that, we have red, green, and blue little speckles around. This is gonna be very difficult, if not impossible, to remove from the final image. But this is only the start. If we look in the upper left corner, it gets even worse. We have another square flare with a bunch of red, green, and blue boxes. And around that, we have another blue flare, which is even larger. Finally, if we zoom all the way out, you might notice that there's a third flare that takes up the entire upper left part of the image. This is just gonna be a nightmare to deal with. And I can tell you from experience that using the ZWO filters has been very stressful over the last couple of years. Here's another look at my ZWO filters. This was with the narrowband set, sulfur, oxygen, H-alpha. Thankfully, these are a lot easier to fix. I can just use a spot healing brush or something similar in Photoshop, and those will be gone in just a few seconds. Still, it would be nice not to have these problems at all. And I wanna be clear, these problems are not just limited to monochrome filters. If you have a color camera with, let's say, the Optilong L Enhance, you're also gonna to have to deal with flares. That's what we see in this image of the Pleiades. This is about 20 hours with the Optilong L Enhance filter, and we've got tons of flares around the Pleiades themselves. And while these could be fixed fairly easily, the issue is that up here in the dust area, we have these kind of red pink splotches throughout the photo. Those are also flares caused by brighter stars. And the issue is when I put the stars back in for the final photo, something just doesn't look right because I've done a star reduction. And when you reduce the stars to something more reasonable, those ugly flares stand out much worse and it just really ruins the image quality as far as I'm concerned. So this is another type of thing you wanna look out for when you're going through your own images and deciding if you wanna to upgrade to something better. You're really gonna notice problems after doing your star reduction at the very end of the workflow. Next, let's take a look at the Jellyfish Nebula. This is just a monochrome image captured with the ZWO oxygen filter. Not only do we have multiple rings around bright stars, we also have halos around other stars throughout the photo, and these become much more obvious after doing a star removal. Now that you've seen how bad things can be, let's compare this with the astronomic filter. This is the same composition using the astronomic oxygen filter. It looks way better, but it's not perfect. We still have a large diffuse flare in the upper right, and this is a consistent problem that I've been seeing with the astronomic filters. So while that's not perfect, I'll take this image over the other one any day of the week. Another great comparison is the Seder region. This is data captured with my ZWO narrowband filters and we have that iconic flare right in the middle. We have the box, the inner circle, almost looks like a cross as well, and then the red, green, and blue dots throughout the middle. Let's compare that now 
to the astronomic filters. I realize that the image is completely different looking, that's because I went with the Hubble color palette, but this is where I want to draw your attention to is this bright star. That's where we saw the annoying flare with the ZW of filters. In this case, we have no flare, at least around the brightest part of the star. There is still this faint blue glow though that's much more diffuse. And we saw that with the oxygen filter in the Jellyfish Nebula photo. So that is something you have to watch out for. While there might not be very distinct flares, you will potentially have this more diffuse flare, which in some ways is actually harder to deal with because there's no one-click solution. You have to start messing with the color channels and it's really not easy to fix. Still, I don't think most people would have even noticed that unless I drew your attention to it. Next up, we have the Seder region once again, but this time with the astronomic deep sky RGB filters and the L2 filter. And if we look at the bright star there, we actually do have a flare this time, oddly enough. And the best way to identify these flares is to go to your color channels. If I click on red, there's a very slight flare there, but nothing I'm worried about, which means that the red filter is pretty good. If we go to the green color channel though, we see a very distinct flare, which tells me that the green filter has an issue. Finally, if we go to blue, it looks perfect. So no issues with the blue filter. Now that we've identified that the green filter specifically is the culprit, another thing I want to draw your attention to is that just like with the oxygen filter, we have this kind of soft glow around this area. And it's really hard to tell from each individual color channel, but I think this mainly ties in with the green filter once again. So it seems that for whatever reason, green and oxygen are the most problematic filters from Astronomic. Well, I have to say it is a bit unfortunate that the green color channel is so susceptible to flaring. I mean, it's not that bad, but I was expecting no flares whatsoever. If you don't have Photoshop and you want to do similar testing, you can always do it in Pix and Sight. What I've done is I've loaded up LRGB as well as H alpha and Oxygen. These are all the older ZWO filters, though, keep that in mind. When you've got everything loaded up, you can go to Window, Tile Windows, and then finally with the newer version of Pix and Sight, if you hold down the Windows key and then Control, I believe, and you drag the name tag from one photo to the other, this will ensure that you have the same amount of zoom. Again, I'm holding down Windows and Control. I'm dragging the name tag to each photo. Now if I zoom into the same spot, they all go there. And what we'll see is that there is a bit of flaring on every single one of the ZWO filters. Again, I'm just trying to show you how to do this in Pixinsight if you want to inspect your individual color channels. On the other hand, if you've already created your color photo, first of all, zoom into your flares, then go to the top left and change to red, green, and blue. And this will show you the flare performance for each individual filter. To be clear, these are the ZWO filters. I'm just doing this because the flares are terrible and this makes it easier to see. And this explains why these flares are so complex because if we look at red, it looks one way. Green, we start to have the square and the circle. And then blue, we have a mix of both once again. When you add all this together, it's just a nightmare situation. So thankfully the Astronomic only have very minimal flaring on the green filter and then a large diffuse flare with the oxygen. Beyond that, I haven't seen any issues. Now that you've seen the difference between the Astronomic and the ZWO in terms of flares, I think you would agree that while I might have saved some money back in 2020, I don't think it was worth the trade-off because the amount of headaches I've been dealing with has not been worth it. And in hindsight, I wish I would have just bought better filters right at the start to make my life easier on the computer. And I will have a link down below the video where you can go through all these sample images on your own and see just how good or bad the flare performance is. You might even want to compare it to your images to see if there's a noticeable difference. All right, and that's all I've got for you in this review. So just to recap, I do think the astronomic filters are a good investment, especially if you're like me and you bought the older ZWO filters and you're just tired of dealing with those annoying flares. I'm also a huge fan of the 36 millimeter unmounted design. I hope other companies start doing something similar because it makes the installation much, much easier. In terms of the price, I do think the Astronomic are right there in that sweet spot. They're not too expensive, but they're also not so cheap that they come with all kinds of problems. And whether you want to buy them directly through Astronomic and get them shipped from Germany, or just buy it through another retailer like Agena Astro, they should be on your door within a week or less with no problems. 
Finally, in terms of the flare performance, it's not perfect. We did see that there's still some large halos around bright stars, but still, when we compare that to the ZWO, it really is a night and day difference. And that's gonna do it for this video. I hope this has helped you make a more informed decision when you buy your next filters. I wanna thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.